please don't go anywhere because we are coming up on our Health Literacy Expo, uh, again, brought to you by Wisconsin Literacy. And uh, we're a nonprofit statewide coalition of 70 literacy agencies that uh, strengthen literacy across the state with expert trainings, personalized consultation, health literacy, workforce connections, and advocacy. And I am so pleased to introduce our presenter, Caitlin Mowat, our project manager with Wisconsin Health Literacy. And with her is Michelle Erickson. They're gonna share some of the really exciting projects um, of the Health Literacy Division and ways your agency can be a part of that great work. So ladies, it's all yours. Great, thank you, Marsha. Um, and thank you everyone for sticking around and joining us for our presentation today. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen here now so we can get the PowerPoint. While she's doing that, I am remiss in not thanking Dennis uh, <laughs> in our last session for that wonderful presentation. So I just wanted to say thank you, Dennis, for um, sharing that information. It's always enlightening. It always makes me think about where we're headed and how much work we need to be doing around workforce. So thank you again. Okay, go ahead, Caitlin. Awesome, yes, sounds good. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so as Marsha mentioned, uh, I work on the health literacy division side, and I know maybe it might be new to some members, um, others, I see some familiar faces and names, and it really is always a pleasure working with you on the many community programs that we can do um, on different health topics. So I'm just gonna give a little overview, um, very visual based on the work that we get to do out in the community um, and talk more also like on our, our national presence and, and how we get to do advocacy on health literacy work. So as you can see on the top row there, the pictures, these are the work um, that we do from our grant funded programs, um, whether it be state funded programs, um, federal programs or um, private funding programs. And we've done many different topics on um, safe ways to take medicine, talking about opioid education, which you see on the, uh, the top left one there is that Kenosha um, literacy. And we were able to talk about safe ways to take prescription opioid medication. Um, the middle one there is at the Lady Smith Senior Center where we worked with um, older adults on ways to navigate health information online. So we were able to bring some laptops, uh, iPads to the facility and navigate one-on-one -on -one with um, those individuals on doing safe searches and finding good information. Um, and then the one on the right there is um, in the Marquette County area where we've had our general medication workshop about talking about safe ways to store medicines um, and, and just um, keep them in safe places and dispose of them properly. So those are a few of um, our past ongoing projects that we have and, and I'll share more in a little bit of what we have coming up for the remainder of the year and the beginning of 2022. Um, before I do that, though, I also wanna mention, we do do um, presentations. We, we talk at uh, national conferences and we also have the pleasure of hosting a national conference, which we do have one coming up April 4th through the 6th. And that's gonna be um, hosted at a new location at the Edgewater in Madison and really focusing on the emerging um, trends of telemedicine and digital literacy along with health equity, health insurance, and, and, and just public health and communication. So. It's always an exciting event um, and we hope that you can enjoy us. We always have a literacy track focus on that for adult literacy. So we make sure to incorporate those events that are um, beneficial for you and the, the students that you support. And then in the bottom right there, you'll see Michelle, um, this was from a national conversation at a round table at the National Science of Engineering and Medicine. So that's more on the, advocating for the work that we do. We, we meet, with, meet with legislators and representatives on health literacy and, and just really have that push. And um, it's come a long way as we've had really good connections now with the Department of Health and Human Services in our work. And I know Michelle will talk more about the COVID project we have coming up here um, for you to participate in and, and get more advocacy on vaccine outreach. 
So you may have seen, if you're not um, subscribed to our Health Literacy Digest, I encourage you to check that out. It's on our website, but we just did a post in our last um, publication about three programs. So I'm gonna go over those now. There are community-based programs where we're able to provide these workshops in different communities throughout Wisconsin and then um, really provide you with free resources. It's free to community members. Um, and then some of them actually offer stipends for you as a host partner to facilitate these either at your facility or we have the option to do these virtually as well. So the first one here is the Let's Talk About Diabetes. This is really um, more about pre-diabetes, the prevention side of it, not the management side about diabetes. And, and we go through nutrition and um, ways to exercise and stay in contact with your doctor, as well as like health insurance and how those preventative care measures can help you um, from getting diabetes, which is um, you're not able to undo diabetes. It's a chronic condition that's with you for life, um, which you can still manage if, man, um, you know, live a healthy lifestyle if managed and maintained, but we really want to focus on the component of finding it out before you're diagnosed with diabetes. Um, unfortunately, it's a very common type two diabetes in America. So these are things that we're trying to work towards. We have the support from Marshfield Clinic to bring this workshop to the communities. It is focused for their service um, area, the Marshfield Clinic service area. And we can work with you if you are outside of their service area. If you're interested in, I, there's, it's most likely the um, central northwestern and um, some northeastern counties in Wisconsin, really the southern um, and the like way western eastern counties aren't really in that area, that service area, but we can work with you on inviting you to our virtual workshop options from those that host it virtually and allow, you know, promote within your community to have your members join us on that virtual setting. So one of those um, benefits from doing this workshop via Zoom. Again, this is a $200 stipend for the host partner and we provide all the materials. This um, image here is one of the fact sheets that we hand out. And then more information is on our website from the programs page. And I see um, Janet had mentioned if the dates. So um, there is we are hoping to wrap these up by February of 2022. Um, that was in within our grant cycle. Um, I guess, you know, we, we take in consideration COVID and what's happening. A lot of these workshops have gone virtual. So we're not scheduling beyond that February date. Um, if, if you have any more questions about that, feel free again to, to send us an email. And we can talk more specifically about those dates. Um, we have our Let's Talk About Pain Medicines workshop. Again, this is funded through Security Health Plan and Marshfield Clinic. With this um, program, this is our continuing existing program um, that we've done a lot. Uh, we've facilitated um, almost 100 workshops on the opioid epidemic and talking about history and safe ways to take and store this medication. Um, we also talk about other non-opioid medication in this workshop and just really explaining how it works in the body and um, talking about ways to identify an overdose and what to do if you have an overdose. So this is a very popular workshop. Um, we have 12 of these workshops we can again do within the Marshfield Clinic service area and then open it up virtually outside of the service area for those um, that can maybe attend one of our virtually hosted workshops. And there is a $200 stipend for this workshop. We do have the drug deactivation kits that we hand out during this workshop. And it's worked really nice when we're able to partner with uh, the county health departments on this, or maybe the Vivint Health Center and additionally do a naloxone training or the county health department has excellent resources on the um, lock boxes and more drug deactivation kits and, and whatnot in their county and local information. So that's really a nice partnership if we're able to make that work out um, and really encourage our host partners to do that. Again, more information on this uh, workshop can be found online under our programs page. 
And then another new one that we have is working with um, the RRF program supported um, by the RRF Foundation for Aging. And it's for those unpaid caregivers, really supporting them because this is a, um, makes up a lot of those that are providing care for those that have dementia or Alzheimer's disease. And, and we wanna provide them with tools and resources as they're giving so much of their time um, and, and helping those that have this disease. So this is a virtual presentation. Um, it's only presented virtually. And, and we're working with um, GWARS, so the um, Greater Wisconsin Association for Aging Resources, um, the ADRC, and um, with the Alzheimer's Institute as well. So if, if you think that in your community, this is something that would be good for you to present for those caregivers, unpaid caregivers that are supporting family members, we, this workshop is about an hour to 90 minutes that is um, hosted virtually and we can get that scheduled for you. Okay, and then I wanted to uh, mention here about our medication label project. Um, this initiative has been ongoing for, we've completed three phases um, over the past seven years, I believe it's been, Michelle, you can correct me if I'm wrong. And we're now going into phase four um, of this medication label project. Our project manager, Bumi, is really taking the lead on this and connecting more with health systems and um, getting pharmacists on board to redesign those prescription labels, um, making them easier to read and reducing patient medication errors. So um, if we look at the language here, we're increasing use of universal medication schedules, so the UM. UMS directions by prescribers. So it really gets into how it's coded on those labels and so that it's easier to understand. And we've been working with um, one of the larger um, technology-based um, drivers in getting these on labels, which would be epic, and making these standards um, more just a natural and way that they're using these um, UMS coding, um, the numerals instead of spelling out numbers because it um, can be easily misinterpreted, morning, noon, and evening, um, and bedtime timing instead of saying take um, twice daily. So really getting just the specifics and easier to understand. And um, this is really important for those that take medications more than once a day, maybe has a lower health literacy level, and then those over 65 years or older. Can I see something in the chat? Um, who can members contact that um, for the health literacy workshops? Thanks, Liz, for asking that question. So um, you can connect with your regional literacy consultant. Absolutely, that is a great way to connect. You also, if you go online, um, through the programs page, we have the direct project manager that you can connect with um, and our health literacy. Um, if you, Liz, if you wanna put that in our health literacy email as well, that will go to our whole health literacy team. But if, if it's easier for you to connect with your regional, regional literacy consultant, please reach out to them. Thanks for asking that question. Okay, and then again, this phase four of the project. So this is gonna be a three-year project started this past summer. Um, the funding is provided to advancing a healthier Wisconsin endowment of the Medical College of Wisconsin. And as I mentioned before, Bumi is um, the project manager and lead of this. So it, for this part of the phase, we're saying, you know, if you know of any health systems that might be interested in making this change and implementing, these standards and the way that they're prescribing medications and that it's um, automatically on that label in those new standards. We would love to hear um, who those contacts could be, connect with them if you wanna set up a meeting. And again, this is something here we can connect with Boomi or if you feel more comfortable, you can connect with your regional literacy consultant and um, start communications that way. So before I hand it over to Michelle, um, she's going to talk more about DHS. I did want to mention um, about the programming and how it's really worked well in the past for just collaboration. Because sometimes I know you have your, your student population that you work with and, and those community members that you support. Um, but adding on building these partnerships with um, 
other organizations in the community, like li your local library, has really been um, very strong and gaining a lot of interest from community members and past programmings that we've done. So if if you're finding that you want to reach more community members, expand on that audience, I really encourage you to connect with your local library um, and see if that's a program that you can bring. They have very inviting space. Um, or as well as any of your healthcare providers, clinics, those are great ways to promote these activities. They can um, promote them with patients and, and really share the upcoming events. And then let us know. We can always come up with other ideas, but it's really fun to collaborate outside of your organization and, and bring this material to a larger reach. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle and she can talk about the COVID outreach grant. Thank you, Caitlin. So, um... Again, as I had mentioned in our annual meeting, um, we have been um, contacted by Department of Health Services to continue some of the great work that many of you did this summer with COVID outreach. And um, this uh, allows us for three years, um, actually the grant now um, will be September 1 of this year, and it will run through uh, June 30th of uh, June 30th of 2024. So um, we are looking each year to bring on an increasing number of community partners and literacy agencies to do this work. We're going to start out this first year, which we're in right now, and it will run through June 30th um, with about 19 uh, participants, hopefully, and we will be uh, sending out information uh, either through your regional literacy consultant or also just through um, our state e-newsletter about opportunities to uh, connect with this opportunity. Um, the grants of awards are much more significant than they were for the five month programs. Um, so they're up, to, they, the first year, just because we're, it started late, it might be around 19,000, but at the second and third year, they look like they would be about $20,000 sub awards to the agencies. Um, because Wisconsin literacy uh, is a, in a different, um, is in a different category in terms of how uh, we work with our auditors. And I know for many of you who are participants in our DCF programs, you know this, because we, we've had some meetings about it recently. Um, there will be requirements to participate this to around um, tracking hours of the work and um, reimbursement, um, you know, receipts and, and reimbursements for the work that you're doing. Um, in order to help guide our members and other community programs through this, we will be hiring a project manager just for the COVID outreach grant. And that manager will be supporting, will also be um, supporting four other new regional, what we're calling um, COVID outreach specialists. And they will be in different parts of the state so that we can better reach uh, the areas that are targeted for low vaccination rates and those uh, specialists will specifically be engaging with uh, participants in this grant to help around the financial requirements to participate and also um, understanding the, the guidelines from um, Department of Health Services and CDC. So as I mentioned before, this is really focused on COVID vaccination outreach, but it's through the means of, um, or the, the modality of health literacy, uh, science literacy, and uh, digital literacy. So we know those skills are so critical in understanding the impact of this uh, pandemic for being able to access support, to being able to access testing and vaccines as well. And so those co three components, digital literacy, health literacy, and science literacy are going to be a part of this grant. And this is something that all of you do already in many different ways sometimes, um, but sometimes not, you know, maybe not calling it that um, initially, but we hope to be able to provide new kinds of resources, perhaps things that are unique like podcasts for students to listen to um, around the science of, you know, viruses and understanding that, um, curriculum resources, uh, 
resources that you can share out in the community. And then we're also gonna be looking for those hyper local concerns within a community that address just the population perhaps that you serve and what that looks like. And I think um, this morning, uh, Anne Laurent had shared that they came up with activities as well that address their specific populations. So again, we would be doing this work uh, together as you address uh, your community needs. So this is just a um, logic model for what we're hoping to do. So this is very broad. And I would like to say also that this is very fluid. So um, while we heard about this last, um, the end of June, um, it took until just last week before we got confirmation from DHS and CDC that this is moving forward in the way that we had anticipated and worked on over the summer. So we do anticipate some changes and um, updates, but initially we're looking to, you know, do a lot of brainstorming sessions, um, co-create work uh, with the communities, um, award these sub-awards to literacy agencies and community organizations, and, um, you know, Wisconsin Health Literacy staff and, and the vaccine community um, will kind of uh, outreach team will, will work together um, with organizations. And the outputs here are around participants and activities and products. I don't know if I need to read all these. I don't think I need to read all these for you, but we, um, you can see that will be a diverse broad group of participants that will help pull all this together. Um, the activities are, will be varied. Um, we are really gonna be depending on uh, the knowledge that you share about your community and the, the needs they have around vaccination outreach um, to be able to develop some of our things and resources. And um, we hoped also to then share those, and as we did this summer, cross-share, kind of cross-pollinate the work that you might be doing that can also serve other communities or other local agencies across the state. There will be recording requirements for the sub-awardees. And again, we hope to have a specialist that will be able to work with your agency closely to make sure that you're understanding those and have the capacity to, um, to uh, work within those requirements. So we, we anticipate strong partnerships and a lot of different types of products that will be a result of this. I'm so excited that it's a three-year grant and not a one-year grant. As many of you know, the five-month grant we did this summer was like, you know, having your hair on fire for a while because it was a tense, uh, intense work in a short period of time. I know makes it difficult uh, on top of all the other work that you're doing. So we are really excited to be able to um, spend some more time in development and thinking about the real needs of each community. And you know, all this in hopes that our impacts are great for the learners, the communities, um, for health outcomes around the pandemic, and um, also just empowering community members, you know, to be able to have these conversations. We know in our training that we did this summer, these sometimes are difficult conversations, and we're really working on skill sets and tools to be able to do that. So I'm gonna stop there because that's a lot and I do anticipate questions. Um, I, we just have one more slide and it's a little bit of information about how Wisconsin Health Literacy works um, as in a fee-for-service model with healthcare providers and businesses um, to bring trainings around how to communicate in health literate ways, how to um, help patients and clients and insurance members really understand uh, the health information that is being brought to them every day. Um, we know there's a huge gap between how health information is communicated and the capacity of all of us, not just our students, but all of us to really access it first, find it, and then understand it, and then be able to act on it, um, particularly now acting on it with the increased technology skills that are needed. Um, and then, you know, all that for better health outcomes. So there's a lot of work to do. Um, our our uh, health literacy division, again, is working with as many healthcare providers um, that want to work with us that are doing this important work. And we've also um, had an emphasis around health equity. And you can't really talk about health literacy if you're not talking about health equity. And so um, our staff is going through some training. And um, I know healthcare systems are really 
uh, interested in the equity part of how people um, achieve better health. So with that, um, again, questions about the grant or questions about any of our services or, or programs in the community. And we've only got a couple of minutes, so uh, we'll, I don't see if anything's in the chat. I did want to just interject with um, Michelle's comments about the fee-for-service programs that we have. Uh, we've you can also get really creative. Um, a lot of the community-based workshops that we already have going on, um, we've had members reach out to us and like with the pain medicines workshop, they wanted to incorporate like the opioid education, but then also the plain language communications and do a, a training for staff that are really in the front lines and working um, and answering questions for not only the students, but community members. And we were able to facilitate um, a, a whole training series on health, um, health literacy, like 101 with plain language and then the opioids. So if you see the uh, community-based workshop program that we talk about that's grant funded and we only have so many workshops, we're able to work with you though beyond that and, and incorporate more of our health literacy training principles as well into it. Well, thank you very much, Caitlin and Michelle. This has just been a, a ton of information. And uh, we thank all of you who've stayed with us because now it's time to join your next session using a link to either sharing your agency story or the digital literacy overview. So we'll see you all in our next meeting. And again, thank you. <laughs>